We return to the mythological plane of Theros, with the release of Theros Beyond Death amidst the fallout of the events of Journey into Nyx. The planeswalker Elspeth, slain by her benefactor Heliod, the Sun God, takes solace in the fact that her soul may now rest in the underworld, but the line between life and death on Theros is thin, and she will once again be called to action as chaos spreads throughout the plane. The gods of Theros draw their divine power from the belief and devotion of their followers. The pantheon of the gods was itself born from mortal prayer long ago, when ancient titans ravaged the lands. For centuries the gods were thought of as immortal beings watching over the mortal realm and using their limitless power to guide its growth. But the notion that Theros' gods were untouchable was shattered with the events of Journey into Nyx. The planeswalker Xenagos' ascent to godhood and subsequent death at the hands of Elspeth Tyrell showed the gods of Theros that not only could mortal beings join them in the pantheon, but the gods themselves were not as untouchable as they once thought. No being took this revelation to heart as much as Heliod. He quickly thrust Elspeth's own spear into her chest and sent her soul hurtling towards the underworld. Heliod's arrogance and obsession with power fueled his fears. After all, if a mortal could inflict such wounds on a god, imagine what the gods could do to one another. The fear that one of the other gods of the Pantheon could win over the devotion of his followers and overthrow him sent him into a mad frenzy. He would use all of his power to remain on top, no matter the cost, which is where the story of Theros Beyond Death begins. Heliod's goal is to weaken the other gods of the Pantheon by interfering with the devotion and faith of their followers. His plan revolves around attacking their temples, shrines, statues, and other religious sites in the polis of Theros. But he needs a being that could freely walk among the mortal realm to carry out this plan. Daxos of Miletus was once a fierce warrior and strategist before he was accidentally slain at the hands of Elspeth. He was sent to the underworld where he remained for a short period of time before becoming a pawn of Phoenix, god of deception. Daxos's soul lingered in Nyx while his body was sent back to the world as a return, an undead being that has neither soul nor memory of their previous life. Helio confronted the returned Daxos with an offer. He would bring Daxos's soul back to the mortal realm so long as Daxos obeyed the sun god and acted as his champion. Daxos agreed and became a demigod of Theros, carrying out Heliod's plan to weaken the other gods. After several such attacks in the city of Melitus and surrounding countryside, the other gods became furious, calling upon their own champions and warriors of old to wage war on their behalf. This is shown in the cycle of demigods, one for each monocolored god, and the scope of the gods' conflict is given in the cycle of monocolored interventions. No other god had as much hatred and resentment towards Heliod as Erebos, the god of the underworld, had. As such, no other god save Heliod was as completely consumed by the ensuing conflict. Erebos sought to right the millennia-old wrong of being cast into the underworld by the sun god, by taking the fight to Heliod. With his mind bent on revenge, Erebos struggled to maintain a tight grip on the underworld and its denizens. Creatures began to break their chains in the underworld and escape to the mortal realm. The god of the underworld's gaze was so transfixed that entire rifts form and monsters of the underworld spewed out and wrought chaos on the mortal realm. This can be seen in the signature mechanic Escape, in which beings can alter their own fate and leave the graveyard to return to the land of the living. Elspeth viewed her death as an escape, an end to her grief, torment, and nightmares. She sought the peace of eternity and then oblivion within the underworld of Theros, but this hope was quickly dashed with the conflict of the gods. News reached her that creatures were leaving behind the underworld to walk again amongst their living brethren. Sensing that her purpose has not yet been fulfilled, Elspeth grabs her mysteriously acquired shadow spear and heads off towards the rifts to put an end to the sun god's madness. Meanwhile, Erebos' neglect of the underworld has awakened the ancient titans of myth. Their chains have broken, and they too seek to escape the underworld so that they may once again rule over the mortal realm. 
This stirs the long-forgotten god of destiny, Clothis, who has acted as warden over the Titans for their centuries of imprisonment. Clothis gazes upon a plane in chaos where beings are no longer tied to their destinies. In fact, the strings seem to have been cut entirely as those long dead once again return to life. Infuriated by the disorder, Clothis works to put everything back into its place, weave them back into the tapestry of destiny. To this end, she seeks to recapture the Titans, return the dead to the underworld, and end the gods' war. Clothis creates a specific agent of fate known as Calyx to hunt down Elspeth and ensure that she too does not escape her destiny. With gods and mortals waging war, creatures of nightmares escaping from the underworld, and characters seeking to rewrite their destinies, the plane of Theros is in an epic confrontation that could shake its very foundations. Thanks for listening to this overview of the story of Theros Beyond Death. In future videos, we'll discuss Elspeth's journey, the Titans and the God of Destiny, as well as talk about smaller topics from around the plane of Theros. Until then, go forth and explore the lore.